If you want to go from a noise animation like this to a clean animation like this without increasing the samples, then I'll show you exactly how to do that. First, we'll have to get the best denoising quality out of the render. Then we'll have to temporarily stabilize the result. To get the best denoising quality, we'll use the Super Image Denoise plugin for Blender. So download it, install it, then go to the Render tab, down to the Create Super Denoiser section. There, toggle the quality to Super. If you've seen as volumetrics, enable them here and click Add Super Denoiser. After that, go to the Output tab and switch the file type to OpenEXR. Now to do the temporal stabilization later, we need the vector and z-depth render passes enabled. After that, go to the compositing workspace and add a file output node. Switch the file type to OpenEXR multi-layer and add two layers, one for the depth and one for the vector. Connect the depth to the depth and the vector to the vector. Then render the animation. Once that's done rendering, create a new Blender file and go to the compositing workspace. Now we'll create the node setup to temporarily stabilize the render. This was inspired by a video by Statics VFX, but I did improve it quite a bit. So get started by adding in the sequence with the images and the one with the layers. Then duplicate it two times for three frames temporal denoising, four times for five frames, and so on. By the way, if you don't want to create this node setup yourself, then you can get it on my Gumroad packaged as a more convenient node group. Or it's also available on my Patreon along with some other cool stuff. But anyways, now set the offset for all duplicated image sequences. For three frames, you'll want to use these offset values, for five these, and for seven something like this. I think you get the idea. All right, now add all of the frames together using mix nodes set to add. Then divide the result by the number of frames used. In my case, five. But now you can see that nothing really lines up. So to fix that, we'll have to to kind of displace the other frames to match the original frame that doesn't have any offset. So add in a displace node, plug the vector into the vector and the image into the image. Now set the scale to the same value as the offset, then replace the non-displaced version with the displaced one. Now do that for all the duplicates. And you can see it lines up much better. But there's still some ghosting left. So to get rid of that, we need some kind of ghosting mask. So let's create that. Duplicate all the displace nodes and shift them down. Then connect the depth to the image and the vector to the vector for every duplicate. Then add a mix node and set it to difference. Afterwards, connect the depth of the image without offset to the top socket and the displaced depth to the bottom one. Then plug the output of that into a math node set to less than with a threshold of 0.99. By the way, if you still have ghosting after this step is done, then this threshold is the thing to tweak. But you rarely need to. Then to account for the displaced node shifting the edges of the image around, plug the displaced depth into a separate color node and multiply the output of the less than node with the alpha. Then lastly, plug the result of the multiply node into an anti-aliasing node with these settings. Now let's make this ghosting removal setup a node group. And don't forget to output the result though. Now I'll duplicate the node group and use it on every image duplicate. Currently we don't do anything with the ghosting mask. So to change that, plug the output of each ghosting mask into its respective add mix node. After that's done, the ghosting should have disappeared. But the brightness of the image changed in the areas where the ghosting was removed. So to fix that, add all the ghosting masks together, then also add one at the end to act as the ghosting mask for the base image. Now plug the result of all of that into the second socket of the divide node. And that's it for this node setup. Just hit render and you should have a very nice and stable denoised animation. And if this video helped you at all, then I'm sure you'll find this video interesting as well.